I'd like to welcome Trip in Southern Style to the kitchen here at Wildflower Ranch Inn. And I'm going to be creating a sweet potato tart. Hey y'all, today we're gonna to be baking with Carol, one of the owners of the Wildflower Ranch Inn. She's also known as Kat, owner of the bourbon tart. So I like to use unbleached all-purpose flour for my base. It is organic and just measure out roughly somewhere between one and a half and two cups is usually good. And just go right in there with that. I do have a couple of things that I do with my crust and um, they're slightly proprietary, but I'm going to share them today. <laughs> um, this is going to be our filling. It used to look like this, but now it looks like this. So this is two sweet potatoes and I do buy the organic sweet potatoes. I peel them and I bake them at around 375 uh, with no peel on because it's really hard to get the peel off a baked sweet potato without burning yourself. <laughs> so I like to do that part while it's nice and cold. Um, then I prepared this last night and I bake them till they're practically mush and put them in the refrigerator overnight. It's, it's okay to have a little texture, but this just uh, ensures that there's no uncooked lumps in there. Just really kind of nice and yummy sweet potato. Make sure there's no hard tips or anything like that, but if you did a, a good job peeling it to begin with, then it should be nice and clean. This is cinnamon here. And this is ground nutmeg. I like to use the Morton and Bassett brand. A um, little less nutmeg than cinnamon, probably the equivalent of about a quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna throw in a little uh, pink sea salt. We've switched to completely using pink sea salt here at Wildflower Ranch Inn. This just adds a little savoriness and it's not so incredibly sweet. Just blending that in a little bit there. Before I add the other ingredients. So what we have for other ingredients are maple syrup and raw sugar. So about a quarter cup of both. That's, that's what's in here. You see the syrup poured right out with that raw sugar. They've been sitting there melding together, blending together. Oh, it's getting good now. <laughs> this is a, a Southern favorite, I think. Um, <clears throat> I've found it in a lot of cookbooks from the South, but I always modify for my own taste. And with the bourbon tart, which is my tart business, I'm Kat, the bourbon tart. Um, <clears throat> we gotta have our own twist on things a little bit. So one thing that is not in the sweet potato tart is um, corn syrup. So I don't use any corn syrup because it's not that good for us. But um, here we go. This is heavy cream and three eggs. So one of the things that I totally bring to my tarts that are different than most are the, is the pastry. So um, pastry, back to the flour. I have the butter in the freezer. This is around three quarters of a cup of butter. It's already cut. And I wanna make sure that it's nice and cold because that's what makes a flaky crust. Very important tool. 
is the pastry cutter. I'm gonna cut that in really well to where the butter chunks are minimalized just down to kind of like little sand grains, but we don't want to blend it thoroughly. Like in the food processor, it would become like all the flakes would go away, be too blended. Key ingredient to my crust is the lemon zest. And I also like to throw in just a pinch of sugar. so that it has a nice flavor just in the crust alone. Now comes the tricky part, the cold water. <laughs> so this is ice water. And I will start this process by doing maybe five tablespoons of ice water. Back with pastry cutter. Depending on the humidity and the temperature, I think every pie maker would tell you that this step varies in terms of how much it takes to get a really nice pastry. So, you can see what's starting to happen here. It's getting kind of sh like shreds. It's really kind of just all weird little shreds before you go any further with more water or the secret ingredient. <laughs> now, we come back to this cold water. I'm gonna put in two more tablespoons and now see what we get. Making tarts or pies gives you good biceps. Last but not least, we are in Kentucky, and I am the bourbon tart, so I always put in a splash of Woodford, which is my personal favorite um, bourbon. Woodford Reserve, I'd say just a drizzle, drizzle. We don't measure this part because in Kentucky, we don't use a shot glass. <laughs> and. Uh, just for flavor. So I'm gonna put a little flour down and get myself ready to roll out this beautiful dough, which is very simple ingredients. Unbleached flour, butter. Um, sometimes I like to use French butter. It's the richest in flavor. And um, sugar, lemon zest, and water. That's it. Boom. <laughs> there we go. So make sure it's going to cooperate. Just get the feel of it. And here is the French pastry pen. I never use a rolling pen, pen with handles. I like the French pastry pen because I feel like I have more control. It's tapered. And I figure they've baked a lot of pastry and they have a reason for designing it this way. And totally, um, you can press down on one side and control the circle that you're rolling out. It's kind of rough in the beginning, but you can always just do a little, if it starts cracking on you, that's a good sign in a way that your pastry isn't too moist and that you are gonna have a nice flaky crust. I usually, in this early stage, just make sure that it's cooperating and not sticking. By doing a little lifting and flipping
Looks like it's shaping up to be pretty good crust. Now with a tart versus a pie, usually does not have a top on it. Sometimes I'll do something purely decorative on the top, like leaves or something. Um, being that this is Wildflower Ranch Inn, that might be flower like cookie cutter shapes. So this is where that French pastry pan comes in handy when you can control the final kind of touches of the shape by applying pressure like you want, like this. You're, all, you're never gonna get a complete circle, but it does have to be bigger than the tart pan. And then we either trim it off or tuck it but that looks pretty good. <laughs> All right, let's give this a try. Hopefully, it'll be cooperative. Can't do a lot of positioning, but you can do a little bit. So because this is presented completely out of the pan, um, I do use a parchment base for easier transfer to the box. Oh my, it smells just like bourbon. <laughs> do you smell it? It's great. Kind of make sure it's down where it should be. This, this has a 90 degree angle at the base, so you have to do a little extra tucking it in. It's not like a pie pan that's got a curved bottom. Now, we'll see how close we are to the right amount. It's okay to have extra. You can use it for a smaller tart. Rich likes it when I do that. This looks like, I, I think two potatoes is just about right for 11 inch tart. It may raise a little bit because it has eggs. You wanna see a rim of pastry around it, but I think that's pretty good. I have my oven set at 390. It sounds like a strange number, um, but with this particular oven, you have to know your oven. That's where I usually start. Um, and it's ready to go in. Once the filling is starting to set, I may turn up the temperature so that the crust gets a little more golden, but we don't want to start out that way because you can't reverse it. Then she decided to make some wildflower designs with the extra crust. She added some butter and sugar and popped them on the top of the tart. Before we knew it, it was finished. I think it's finished. Let's see. So, cooling rack is always a good thing. So, this is how you take the tart out of the ring. Perfect. And then, if I did this properly, <laughs> let's see. It's dangerous to do this with a sold tart, isn't it? She's right. <laughs> there is a little piece of metal that's got to come out. There we go. Hey, that's all right. That's what it's for. <laughs> and um, now that little baby can just sit there and cool till the client gets here. We don't know about you, but we had a great time baking with Kat from the Bourbon Tart. 
make sure to check out her website to order your own tart and to learn more. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing to hit that button, y'all.